Welcome to Just Minding My Business Radio, where we are moving at the speed of God, learning what we didn't know we didn't know. I'm your host, Ida Crawford. And I'm your co-host, Ruth Haskins. So grab a pen and paper and get ready for information that you can use. Welcome to Just Minding My Business Media, LLC. Broaden the scope of exposure for your business by going beyond the interview. Learn more at www.jmnbmediallc.com or email us at jmnbradio at gmail.com. Today, we welcome Deb Curtis. Deb is the founder of Curtis Small Business Finance Solutions, LLC, DBA Deb Curtis. She is an SBA business acquisition lending consultant specializing in business ownership transitions. She sources and packages best bank loan projects for business acquisition success, helps those who want to buy a business with SBA, and helps pre-qualify business buyers within 24 to 48 hours. Fabulous. Welcome, Deb. Well, thank you. Thank you, Ruth. And thank you, Ida. It's a pleasure to be here today. Yes, it's a pleasure to have you. So what inspired you to do this? Oh, my. What inspired me to do what I do today is based on seeing the older versions of me. Well, well, actually younger because I'm older now. So the prior versions of Deb Curtis working for corporate America as a woman and in an industry that was was and still is very male dominated, trying to find my space, trying to find promotion, trying to um, climb the corporate ladder. And as we all know, um, you know, women, uh, women of color, women in general, uh, we are the largest minority population in the U S and, um, I realized that through my experiences of trying to climb that corporate ladder and learning more about SBA lending, I was drawn to business acquisition transactions of established money-making businesses, seeing individuals take over these baby boom boomer owned businesses. And, um, Girls, I have to tell you, the ma- majority of the applicants I've seen over the years have been men, and God bless men, we need them in our world, <laughs> but we need to see more women taking over these businesses, and that is what inspired me, Ida, was realizing, why didn't somebody teach me how to do this 20 years ago, 10 years ago? Why didn't anyone teach me how to do this? There is nowhere really to go. You have to nose around like my late daddy always told me. If you want to learn something, nose around. So here I am today, Ida, um, helping individuals take over these businesses with a passion to help out women to get there as well. Wow. Women have come a long way, but we still have a long ways to go. And it's nice to know that there's somebody out there on the front lines who recognizes this and is working to make it possible for us to grow in the business arena. Mm -hmm. Yes. And especially in the acquisition (coughs) arena, you know, I've met, you're the second woman Mm -hmm. that I've met um, who is in the business of, you know, helping business owners sell their businesses. So what, what do you think, women are not doing it as much as men. My thought why women aren't doing it as much as men is because historically men in corporate America have been the, well, the breadwinners, Mm -hmm. um, more privileged to be promoted because typically we women were home taking care of the house, taking care of the kids, Um, you know, and that's all good. It's all good. Um, But there's things, times are, have changed and and women can balance home and take care of the kids 
and own a business, whether they start it up or they acquire one that's already profitable and established, and they can do it all too. Um, and I just have to say, because I am a woman, my husband would agree, we probably could do take on more of that than most men could. <laughs> <laughs> right. And my yeah. husband would agree with me. So I can honestly say that he's like, I don't know how you do it all. But I think we have that in us. We're mama bears. I think of us as mama bears. And, and I'm that's why I'm so passionate girls to to get women to understand that this is an opportunity, you don't need to just start up a business ground up, because that's hard. Um, we, we need startup businesses, don't get me wrong, but that's hard because we know it takes time to become profitable. But if you're a woman and you want to acquire a business that's already working and operating, has employees, has loyal customers, it's, it's like a promotion uh, in corporate America where you're promoted to manage this team of people and manage customers and deliver great customer service. Um, but the difference is you just promoted yourself to, to a CEO, small business owner. Now, how nice is that? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Absolutely. So what, what areas are you finding um, women uh, stepping into of businesses that are already owned? Is there a particular area that women seem to be more likely to step into? I like that question. And um, I see a lot of women taking over businesses that are um, staffing agencies, recruiting, um, senior home, health care, child care. Um, I even see women that perhaps are an experienced office manager at a auto repair shop. And they're the ones that are taking care of the customers and, and ordering parts. And they might not be the mechanic under the hood doing the work, but I'll tell you what, there are plenty of women out there that can do that. But th that's an opportunity for a woman to purchase finance and established auto repair business. You know, there, there are a lot of qualities that women have and they can take over many of these industries, just like you were questioning, Ruth, you know, a lot of the care, because we care, we, I think we have a little more, I don't know, what's the word I'm looking for, girls, more heart in, in, in customer service, and yes. we love to care. <laughs> yes, that's in our DNA. <laughs> there you go. It is. We're mamas. We're mama bears, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's very true. Very so we have to look for places where we can give service. So, yes, service is really important. Oh, wow. We got a little. Um, right. Service. I like that. I like that, Ruth. We were, we were, we were born to serve, right? Yeah, pretty much. And <laughs> that's, that's what right. we've been doing all these centuries. And so mm -hmm. now it's just turning around that, you know, we kind of like get the benefits of that as well. Not that there's not you know, benefits in being a wife and mother and house, you know, maintainer. Uh, but yeah, to be able to stretch ourselves and find out what we can do. That's right. We do. Where, where do, does all that talent and, you know, because we have talents too. And I think for a long time, we only thought of men as being, having what it takes. I'll put it that way. Yeah. To mm -hmm. be out there, do all these things. And and I, and they do, but I, I'm going to say it because I, I'm a, I promote it. I think women have more and then some to take over many of these businesses. Think about when, if you're a mother, when you when your child was born, when that baby came out, who did they hand it to? They didn't hand it to the husband. <laughs> <laughs> My, mine was just about passed out on the floor. I'm like, well, I guess you can't handle that. Can you? <laughs> Same here. <laughs> right? that, that's funny. That's you know, probably very true. It is. Or or when the child was sick in the bedroom and throwing up and I'm not handling it, says the man. And I'm like, well, we got no choice but to go as a mom. So um, that's the power of women in business ownership. And, and um, I think a, a number, I do want to share this. A number one reason why most people are worried about or don't know enough about purchase financing and established money-making business 
is that they think their own current household income is the income that has to make the SBA loan payment. It's nice to have additional income, right? If you have a spouse or what have you to take care of the household needs, but the business that you're acquiring, the business that you're buying, and and that's the business that's going to be financed, the historical income based off of the business tax returns is what the bank underwriter is approving your loan project on. So as long as you transis- transition in as the new owner and all your employees that have already are seasoned and doing their jobs, they're happy, they love their business that they work for, the business that's owner that's selling loves you as the new buyer, you transition fine. If it runs as is, the income is set to make your SBA loan project payment. That's so if you're good at transitioning in, you know, you think about when in your careers as as a woman, if you were promoted, you, you know, oh boy, here comes a new boss in town. You did it tactfully as a woman. You cared, you, you, we loved, right? We served. Um, we wanted them to like us. We welcomed them to you know, give us their ideas and on how to be a team. And and I just think we have that finesse. So remember, ladies, or whoever is out there listening uh, to this great show, that it's the business income historically proven that tells the bank underwriter, well, if Ida buys this business historically, and it operates as is, it should make the SBA loan payment, and it could grow. It could grow as well. Mm -hmm. Wow. I think that's really important. I don't think I ever knew that. And I bet Mm -hmm. you a lot of people who are listening have never understood that. Thank you for making that so clear. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, as if I was interested in purchasing a business, Mm -hmm. what are some of the criteria that I need to have? Yes. So um, if you're an individual and you call me and you want to learn how to purchase finance a business and what are the requirements you need, think of it like a first time home buyer. And, and there are so many courses out there through the you know decades of past and even today on how to become a first time home buyer. You need good credit, right? So we want to make sure um, the bank is going to want to make sure you personally have good credit, which means you have good character, you pay your bills on time. And then just like when you buy a home, you got to have some down payment into the finance transaction. Um, It's tough today to buy a home with no money down or even a car. You got to have a down payment, right? We call that equity. The, The buyer's putting equity into the transaction. So some savings, uh, enough to support usually up to five or 10% of the sale price of the business. Mm -hmm. And what we're looking for is a career where you have some management experience, whether you've managed a team of three people or you manage a team of 30 people, Um, you know, to purchase finance a business when you're 21 years old and, and you haven't really proven on your resume yet that you have a lot of career experience. Usually it, 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 I would say a typical age range of buyers would be, you know, anywhere from late twenties, all the way to Gen Xers are looking to buy businesses today. You know, I, I'm a Gen Xer and, um, uh, I'm, ex- I exited corporate America and I, I wish somebody would have taught me sooner to purchase finance a business. So that's a good start. Um, Now, some industries, if you're looking at, and they're very more niche, like a restaurant, Mm -hmm. if you want to purchase finance a restaurant, a bank may want to see that you've worked in a restaurant at some time in your career. Um, Like for me, when I was very young, out out of high school, I worked at a restaurant for about five years but I managed people. I did inventory at the restaurant. Um, I I knew how to do all the different um, stations in the restaurant uh, as far as tasks that had to be done. And if you came to me and said, I want to buy a restaurant, 
but your restaurant experience was from 25 years ago, like mine was, I would tell you, well, move that up on your resume so the underwriter can see that you do have restaurant experience Mm -hmm. because that tells them you've done it before and you can do it again. Right. Exactly. You never lose skills. (laughs) No, Mm -mm. no. And I do know chopping up onions in the kitchen, though, wasn't for me. I cried all the time. (laughs) (laughs) So if people want to work with you, how do they do so? Yes, um, you can visit my website. It's my name, debcurtis.com. And as we were talking before the show kicked off, um, LinkedIn is my my social media platform of choice. But I am on all so- social channels. And my handle is at Deb, D-E-B, Jojo, J-O-J-O, Curtis, C-U-R-T-I-S. My middle name is Joe and I'm a new grandma. So my grandkids call me Jojo. Okay. Congratulations. (laughs) Congratulations. Thank you. See, I'm I'm still serving girls. It's never going to stop. Oh no. (laughs) We in service to the day we leave this earth. (laughs) Oh man. Amen to that. (laughs) It never goes away. Uh Yes. So how do you balance with the financial and operational considerations of running a business with your passion for social impact and community service. Oh my, how do I balance it? I, I am more passionate about helping individuals because I see that, that younger version of me that kept trying to get promoted and couldn't. Um, I am, I, my standards are, being fully transparent, ethical. And I use a quote often, and it's in my headline, uh, God, grit, and grace. And I, mm-hmm. I balance my personal life and my business life with God, grit, and grace. And there have been many times in my life, as all of our lives, where there's been ups and downs. And we know we need God in all of those ups and downs. And sometimes I needed you know, more grit than grace or vice versa, more grace than grit, but always God was there with me. So how do I balance it? God, grit, and grace. Um, That's my, that's my motto. I like that. (laughs) Thank you, dear. Well said. So what advice would you give individuals who might want to make that leap from corporate America to entrepreneurship? Being a business owner of a Um, an established money-making business, day one, the current business owner's salary is transferred to you. So you do have an income as long as you continue to operate and run the business with the seasoned employees and loyal customers as is. You'll still get paid a salary and there'll still be net profits after all of that. Now, We didn't know pandemic was going to hit in 2020. And there were some folks that did buy businesses. And for instance, restaurants were shut down abruptly, right? And that that changed parameters. So that's why you want to make sure before you go into buying a business that you do have a cushion of what we call and what we were all raised to do have an emergency personal savings of up to six months, at least, you know, to cover in case of an emergency like that. Right. Um, And if you have that cushion, you're going to be fine if there's a downturn. Um, Now, I think a corporate America, especially in our market the last couple of years and more so today, corporate is just as risky as owning a business because you could just be permanently let go. And yes, you can collect unemployment, but last I looked unemployment, you know, benefits aren't aren't, the max for, for uh, benefits is nothing near what some, some folks are earning in a W2 salary today. Um, What would I recommend? You got to have fire in the belly and uh, Hmm. trust in yourself that no matter what adversities you're faced with, that you will overcome them. And if you think about yourself in corporate America, we all have goals and sales goals, and we all have 
a performance review that's done, you have to treat yourself like you are the employee and you need to check in with yourself and, and run that business and make sure you're meeting all of those goals. Mm -hmm. Just like your supervisor was hovering over you, going over your review. So you got to hold yourself accountable, Ida. And, and I think the number one factor that anyone that wants to exit corporate America, if you believe in yourself and you have fire in the belly, you will make it happen. Mm -hmm. I like that. Find the belly. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. You really got to want it. And if you look at any of the successful people that are out there, you can tell they had fire in the belly because mm -hmm. some of them, you know, was homeless. Yeah. Some of them was, you know, because they believed in what they were doing and they knew deep down in the belly that yeah. eventually it was going to work. Right on. Yes. I, I think of the restaurant owners during the pandemic, there were many that um, just shut the doors and I think they lacked the fire in the belly and it, it can be mental. You just give up. Right. But then I would see restaurant owners that adapted quickly and created, you know, an online website for in carry out and deliveries. I mean, there was a restaurant in my hometown. They just put the phone off the hook and you couldn't even call because they couldn't keep up with carry out orders. If they would have put a system in place to order online, think of the revenues that they would have earned. Mm -hmm. um, so like you said, you, you have to have adaptability. And if you can be creative, sometimes the adversity that we experience in our life creates opportunity. And, you know, th those that have the fire in the belly see it that way, right? Yes. They see it that way. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got to definitely think outside the box. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, I bet I bet you do every day, Ida. Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. Because, I mean, if you're not adaptable and if you're not willing to change, mm -hmm. you're going to get stuck eventually. Mm-hmm. Because mm -hmm. everything is evolving. Everything yeah. is changing. Whether you want it to change or not, is changing. So yeah. in order for you to stay relevant, you've got to move with the flow. Mm -hmm. for oh, sure. man. For sure. Wow. I'm with you on that. Like you said, many businesses are aging out because of their ownership. People are looking for a way to transition out. Other people want to transition in. And so, again, it's that awareness that this was not a big thing 30 or 40 years ago. And if it was, only a few people knew about it. Right. But now, with so many people aging out, because the baby boomers have the largest population of owned businesses at this point. Mm -hmm. So now, how do we, um, how are they transitioning? How are the baby boomers transitioning out? And can you give them, anyone who happens to be listening, an insight on the best path to take? And while you, you spoke that so well, spot on regarding baby boomers, I think 10,000 a day they're retiring is what the number is. And I mean, that's not 10,000 business owners, but 10,000 baby boomers, but small businesses are owned by a lot of baby boomers, how would they prepare to exit? That's the question. And my entire career, I used to visit business owners that are now baby, baby boomers today, but 10, 20 years ago, they weren't baby boomers. And I was trained to walk in and have conversation with the business owners. And the first question was, what is your succession plan or your exit plan? And if small business owners are out there listening today, planning to sell your business is, does not mean you plan to sell it today. What it means is that if something happens today, a pandemic um, uh, or a major car accident the business owner is in or a death of the business owner, you want that business ready to still operate and be prepared to sell 
in case the good Lord calls you home. We don't know when that time is. So exit planning isn't on your terms. Exit planning is making sure your business is in order to take care of your family if something should happen to you. Um, it takes time to uh, prepare your business to sell. A lot of business owners simply want to sell based on what their need is. And this, the sale of the business isn't so much about the need of the business owner. Selling the business is based on the need of the business buyer. You can't sell a business for too much money if your historical tax return cash flow can't make the loan payment for the buyer. That's where they need to focus. So there are, and if you query up on LinkedIn, many business exit planners, um, they're licensed and they'll work with small business owners to take a look at their business to prepare it for a sale. Not that they're going to sell today, or maybe they do want to sell today, or maybe they want to sell in two or three years. You Now is the time. The time to prepare to sell a business is the time you acquire one or you have an established one, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's what I was taught to teach. But sadly, many baby boomers today, because we talk about it, just didn't listen to the advice because they maybe wanted to take a shortcut with the IRS and not report everything. And, and then something happens and they got to sell the business, but they have no net income to show because they didn't want to pay taxes. That is why you hear that 80% of the businesses on the market today won't sell because they can't get bank financing. Mm -hmm. I, I look at that though, as opportunity to improve and I've been preaching it for my whole career to business owners to get the business ready for sale because um, you just never know when your real exit is going to be. It can be done. It can be done. There are professionals and there are good businesses out there. Sometimes the best business to buy is in your neighborhood and you just might know who that business owner is and it's not on the market and you're just having conversation at the local coffee shop and ask, you think you'll ever sell your business? That might be the business you're, you're going to buy. Mm. Sometimes those are the best ones and just general conversation. It's been amazing, Deb. We're going to definitely have to do this again. Be do mm. you help people prepare their businesses for exit? Well, I don't, but I, I do know credible, reputable professionals that are licensed exit planners that do. Um, and, and I follow a few of them on LinkedIn because they educate a lot on LinkedIn about exit planning and, and what to do and what not to do. So if anybody needs help or direction, I'd be happy to point them in the right, in the right place. Okay. So again, how do people connect with you? That's right, Ida. They can connect with me at debcurtis.com. It's my name, D-E-B, and then my last name, C-U-R-T-I-S.com. Or on LinkedIn, you can find me there uh, uh, under Deb Curtis. Uh, Deb Jojo Curtis is my handle on all social media platforms. All righty now. So we're definitely going to have to have you come back so we can dig a little bit deeper and basically try to get more women into yes. buying uh, businesses because mm -hmm. I really, you know, women want to start a business, but I never hear in the conversation, I'm going to purchase a business. That's right. I, you got it, Ida. You don't because nobody knows enough how, and that's what I'm here to do is teach the how to get you there. So thank you so much for having me as a guest. It's been a blessing. Yes. Oh, thank thank you. you for being here. Absolutely. Thank you for tuning in to Just Minding My Business Radio. I'm your host, Ada Crawford. And I'm your co-host, Ruth Hackson. We hope you enjoyed the show and appreciate you stopping by. Many blessings to you and yours.